one thing that's congruent towards or congruent in a lot of these fears is the only way to uh, work through that, to get over that, to get past that is actually to walk towards that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! It's another episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 174. And the title of today's episode is Five Fears. And I want to go through and unpack uh, real quickly for you guys. Uh, the five major fears, and really they are the major fears and the five pyramids of your human performance. And if that's a new phrase for you, uh, it's something I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, here in the future. The five pyramids of human performance are physical, intellectual, wealth, relationships, and spiritual. So if you look at those five areas of life, that pretty much encompasses absolutely everything. And so let's go through the fears the primary, the most common, and maybe the most debilitating fears in each of those areas. And so when we start with physical, the biggest fear in your physical life is pretty simple. It's death. And one thing that's congruent towards or congruent in a lot of these fears is the only way to uh, work through that, to get over that, to get past that is actually to walk towards that. And by that, I mean that fear. And so if you think of this fear of death, you have to start taking action towards that fear. So when you become f afraid of something physically, and if you're afraid um, to die, you're afraid what happens when you die, when you, uh, when you're afraid of what your life will look like at that point in your life. And it's, if you're someone that a fear of death is an everyday thing, like you're just terrified, the only way to work through that and to get past that is to walk towards it and to look at what does death look like for you? What does that mean to you? What things will happen to your family? What things will happen with what you're leaving behind? And what I found is that if you get a plan in place for what happens after you die, whether you want to call that estate planning or getting your, um, uh, what's that phrase, getting your affairs in order, whatever, whatever you want to label that, if you actually go through that process, um, it takes a little bit of the sting away from thinking about death when you know that things have already been put in place to where at the very least you're not creating a burden uh, or a huge responsibility on someone else by you no longer being here. And so that would be an example of stepping towards that fear. If you fear dying, well, let's go ahead and just say, okay, you're going to die tomorrow. What are the things that you need to do today to make that a smooth process, to make that a process that is not only not a burden, but can be a blessing for your family and for other people. Um, so that when you're gone, they're going to remember all the good things. And Reality for me is when I think of the fear of death, it's really the fear of not living life the way that you should. It's a fear of not leaving behind what sh you should. It's, it's a fear of, of not having said the things you wanted to say, of done the things that you've wanted to do. And so it's not actually the fear of death. It's really just the fear of not truly living. And so as you step towards death, you're actually stepping in to life in a more fulfilled life, a more full life and a life that will leave a legacy when you are no longer here in the intellectual pyramid, there's this fear of being found out. And I've talked on this podcast uh, quite a few times about this idea of being a fraud or putting yourself in fraudulent environments. But ultimately, when you look at your intellectual life, when you look at the things that you know, that you understand that you're learning, the fear is that someone's going to call you out or that something's going to happen to where what you think, you know, is not enough. And so the only way that you can combat that fear is by continually learning and not only learning, but applying what you're learning to your life. 
Uh, I would say one good step towards that, again, being the only way to get past it, moving towards it, is to be able to share that information with other people. If you learn something and you keep it to yourself, it's of no use. If you learn something, keep it to yourself and apply it, that's better. But if you can learn something and then share it with other people so that you can you can extend that knowledge to the world so that other people can take that, apply it in their lives and become better because of it, then that fear of being found out, that fear of not knowing is impossible. And so my question for you is, what are you learning right now? And then what are you applying that you have learned? And if you have a fear of being found out, if you have a fear of someone calling you out for something that you think you know or may not know, then every single day you have to step towards that by learning more about it, by getting a better understanding, by being able to apply it in different ways, and ultimately by being able to share it with other people so that they can know those things as well. So again, you're stepping towards whatever it is that you're fearful of. A primary example of that is if you have a direct fear of, hey, there's this thing that I speak about, I don't want to be found out that I don't really know that much about it, then maybe you should step towards that and learn more about it so that that fear is not present in your life. Third, wealth is the fear of loss, the fear of losing money, the fear of the risk that's involved with whatever it is that you're pursuing, that you may lose that, or it may be taken away from you. This is an interesting step in how to uh, move in the direction of that fear to ultimately get past it. But imagine taking out a check and actually not really imagine, just take out a check and completely write it out to somebody else or leave the name blank, but put the amount on that check as your entire net worth, all the cash investments, businesses, everything that you own, add all that up, obviously an estimation and write it out on a check as though you were going to just give that to someone else. As I've been being coached by and with Tom Shea, a retired Navy SEAL, uh, whose book Unbreakable and Three Simple Things, specifically Three Simple Things, unpacks exactly everything I'm going through right now. He talks about in the hundreds of people that he's coached one-on-one -on -one, that no one's been able to actually write that check. So I would challenge you to prove him wrong. Are you able to write a check for your entire net worth? But just the act of doing so or attempting to do so will move you in the direction of that which you fear, which is losing everything. When you get to a place in your mind where you are willing and able to write a check to give everything away, then now that fear of losing what you and your mind are in the process of giving away dissipates. In the relationship pyramid, the biggest fear that's most prevalent in people right now is this feeling of being alone. And we're in a situation right now where we've been purposely isolated for good and not so great reasons, but isolation causes death. And this fear of being alone is very real for a lot of people right now. So an actionable step to walk towards that. And this one, again, just like the last one is going to be a little funny. It's going to sound, it's going to sound odd but try to damage your relationship. If you're married, try to damage it. Like go home tonight and do something that's going to absolutely sabotage your marriage. Just like in the last, the uh, last fear, Tom has told me numerous times that out of the hundreds of people he's coached, no one will actually do it. Because the reality is you don't want to damage your relationships. You don't want bad relationships. But this fear of not wanting to be alone, just step towards it. What would I need to do in order to actually be alone? I would need to damage the relationships from people around me. But as you actually go through that process of trying to damage the relationships around you, you'll realize that you can't do it. And you'll realize that you're actually not alone because there are people that are in your life that support you and love you uh, and care for you. The last one, spiritual, which is the fifth pyramid of human performance, the biggest fear is that life is empty. And this one is very, very, very serious. And the, the spiritual pyramid, if you are not in sync with your spiritual life, it crumbles the other four pyramids. It takes down the entire formula. 
But the actionable step for being able to step towards this fear that life is empty or that life is meaningless is to simply try to prove that life is meaningless. And it's an interesting process as you try to convey and articulate why life would be meaningless. If that's a fear that you have, I promise you, and again, Tom has confirmed this with hundreds of people coaching one-on-one, it's impossible to prove and to convey that life is meaningless and not have your articulation of that filled with meaning. Just in the process of trying to unpack why life would be meaningless, you're going to be, you're going to be saying things that are meaningful and you're going to be unpacking different things in your life that actually do have meaning. But there's another interesting thing about this fear of me of life being meaningless or life being empty is that the opposite is also actually a fear as well, which the opposite of life is empty or meaningless is that you are powerful beyond measure. That for some people is a very big fear as well. And they don't know how to handle that. But again, if you think about this, this fear of life being meaningless, ultimately in order to step towards that and pass through that fear, you just have to try to articulate how, and in that articulation of how life is meaningless, you will find so much meaning that you will be able to push past that fear and get onto the other pyramids. Um, and it's the glue that sticks them all together. If there's no meaning to life, then your intellectual life, your physical life, your wealth, none of that makes any difference. If there's no meaning, if life is just this spinning ball of dirt that you're on for a period of time and you're gone, then what do the other pyramids even matter? And so as you look at all five of these fears, death being found out, loss, being alone, that life is empty, which one of those resonate with you? Which one of those are a fear that you may have right now or that you've had in the future? And which ones are the ones that came, seem to be coming up the most on a weekly basis? Which of those fears are most prevalent in your life? That would be the one that you want to start with. You don't have to start with physical. The one that's most prevalent in your life is the one that you ultimately need to start going down this path of walking towards it. Because unless you walk towards it, that fear will always be there. The more you isolate from it, try to uh, pull back from that which is causing the fear, the more that fear is going to control your life. And so if you want to control the fear and rather than have the fear control you, you have to take actionable steps towards that thing. It's no difference. It's no different than having a fear of heights and needing to actually put yourself in a position to overcome that fear of heights by going up on top of a building getting on an airplane, whatever that may be. It's the exact same thing. The only way that you will overcome these fears is by walking towards them. So with that, guys, this is episode 174, the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!